I'm absolutely delighted to accept the honour of being the president of the Wildlife Trusts. This is the very backbone of conservation in this country and I'm very much looking forward to adding what I can to the incredible work that's going on. It's been my pleasure and privilege to be involved with the Wildlife Trust in different ways for more than 30 years as, as an employee, as a trustee, as a supporter, as an advisor and now taking on the incredible honour of being the president of the National Wildlife Trust Federation. The United Kingdom is a relatively small country with an awful lot of people. It has very intensive agriculture. It's got a rising population and all the pressures that will come with that, not only for land, but also for water, access to soils and natural resources. If we are going to be able to conserve wildlife in the face of these enormous and growing pressures, we're going to have to think very carefully about how we do that. And it seems to me that one of the most important arguments that still needs to be won is to show everybody how nature is essential for the well-being of our economic system. It's not simply something that we can see as nice to have in the good times, it's vital for our security, for our health and our well-being. The Wildlife Trust movement is unique because it's about wildlife everywhere, including right here where we live. There's houses right around this nature reserve and people come here in the evenings without having to get in their car and they can see some beautiful wildlife. It's not about over there and about rarity and about scarcity. It is about that too, but really it's about wildlife everywhere for everybody for every day. We know that access to, to wild areas, to wild places, looking at wildlife, hearing birdsong, experiencing running water by a clear river, all of these things are very good for us, and that's a scientific fact. So the more that the wildlife trusts can help people get access to these essentials of life, the more we're going to be solving not only conservation challenges, but also some of society's biggest issues too. One of the first places I visited when I moved to Cambridge 26 years ago was this spot here, Cherry Hinton Chalk Pits, managed by the Wildlife Trust for some really quite incredible wildlife still living here, right at the edge of the city of Cambridge. We have a, a plant here called the Moon Carrot, which is found only in one or two other sites across the British Isles. And we have glowworms living here, those incredible little insects that you can see lighting up the ground uh, on certain days in the summertime, absolutely beautiful insects. But this little spot of, of nature right here is connected, if you like, to a living landscape that runs right through the city of Cambridge. Um, just across the road there, you'll, you'll see a place called the Giant's Grave, a, a pool of water accumulating from chalk springs that are running out of the rocks right beneath our feet here. That pool turns into the Cherry Hinton Brook, which is a, a, a slither of silver wonders that runs along the side of the city. And cycling over here this morning, I saw a little egret and I saw a kingfisher. And if that's not enough to brighten anybody's day, I don't know what is. One of the most important drivers for the success of conservation over the decades has been the connection that many conservationists have had with wildlife and with natural places. They come to it with a deep, instinctive, personal understanding of why nature matters. If we're going to be able to sustain that into the future, as well as to reap the benefits that time in nature brings to people in terms of their well-being, then we really do need to be bringing children into contact with nature in more meaningful ways than presently is the case. Everybody can be an effective champion for wildlife and there's so many different ways that you can do it. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, you can turn it into a wildlife friendly garden. I've done that and we have frogs, we have newts, we have butterflies, lots of different insects, we have bats and we have lots of different birds visiting. It's, it's, it's easy to do. You can change your consumer behaviour. You can use less resources, recycle more, make sure you're sourcing from the companies that are doing more for wildlife rather than less. And of course, you can speak to politicians who've been elected to represent us to make decisions in different levels of government across the country. And many of those people are, like all of us, very much interested in the future and looking after wildlife can be a part of that if it's put in the right way. And one of the very important ways for that to be put is for ordinary members of the public, for voters, to speak to those politicians and say that it's important to them. My message to supporters across the country is, first of all, to say thank you for your incredible backing for this movement over the years and also to say please do more because there is still much more to do and I'm sure that by working together we can achieve a great deal.